Well, I have no idea whether the intro has worked for this video or not, because my microphone apparently disconnected, but welcome to the Canadian Grand Prix here from Circuit Giovanna. If it hasn't, diving in then immediately into qualifying, already having a few issues with Zhou Guan Yu. Track limits around here are going to be very, very difficult to try and manage, but... Yeah, we want to try and get a good benchmark on the board. Like I said, I don't really want to be showcasing Q1s all too much more in this series. So let's try and just get one clean, tidy lap. The Piastri immediately down into the 1 minute 8. We're in the slipstream of Zhou Guan Yu, though. So we head down in towards the final couple of corners. But you can see how quick that Alfa Romeo is down the straight. Let's try and use that slipstream as best as possible as we navigate our way through the final chicane. But up towards the line... A 9-9 there puts us a second away. That is not particularly promising after a first run. One more run then here in Q1. Down in P12 at the moment. So we've got a few places we can fall. But yeah, really not feeling confident around this venue at the moment. We've not made Q3 two weekends in a row. No, down to P16. I'm not improving on this run. We're out. We're out in Q1 here in Canada. What am I meant to do at the moment? We just cannot find the pace in the car. It feels like dog poo in qualifying trim. And P17 in the end here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Our qualifying runs are just becoming a disaster. Kevin Magnussen fastest though ahead of Alex Albon. And I've got no idea how our teammate managed to get down onto an 8-8 there. But we get knocked out by just quarter of a tenth to Enzo Fittipaldi in the end. So Williams making it through and into Q2. But... Yeah, we just had nothing. Nothing at all there. Changeable conditions, though, come race day Sunday. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can try and find some improvement. Montreal is not only the second largest French-speaking city in the world, but it's home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. The name Villeneuve looms large over this one, but who can write their own legends today? With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula 1 calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle, and average speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Oscar Piastri lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Verstappen, Albon, Sainz, Magnussen, Hamilton, Russell, Gasly, Ocon, Norris, Bottas, Theo Porcher, Fittipaldi, Stroll, Mr. Monaco, De Vries, Sergeant, Liam Lawson, Joe, and Yuki Sonoda. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Natalie Pinkham, a lot of talented drivers out on the track today, but what will stand out for you? Formula One never sits still. That's something that is so compelling about it as a fan. I love the fact that they're always pushing boundaries, always asking questions, always challenging how we can do better and create more performance, more entertainment, more technological advances. And we take the viewers with us on that journey, and I think that's why it's so thrilling. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Right, well, here we are then, trackside already for the Canadian Grand Prix. And as mentioned, changeable conditions here this weekend is certainly going to add some spice. I'm going to have to go ballsy, though, in terms of the strategy today. You know, no messing around. We need to try and get a good result here. Two-stop strategy. Hopefully, then, if that rain does appear right towards the end of the afternoon, we can try to be quick on some tyres as well. But yeah, P17, really not the qualifying I would have wanted. Um, could have potentially taken some engine penalties this weekend, got some fresh power unit components in the pool. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's going to be one of those days where we need to get on with it as Aston Martin line up on the pole. Well, I've always said Oscar Piastri is the real deal, and maybe this weekend he can prove it once again. Five red lights. It's lights out, and away we go there, or not, if you're the hassle out for a minute. Look at that, about four cars have not gone. So you head down in towards turn one there, and 
Well, just like Mon uh, sorry, Barcelona last weekend, making plenty of places up. By the time we get down in towards someone, they're having to weave our way through the Alfa Romeos, the Hasses, and I think it was Lando Norris there as we go side by side with Fittipaldi off of the first couple of corners, trying to give him a bit of a squeeze there as we make our way through turn three. Always a tight, twisty, horrible chicane to try and navigate, and even worse, of course, now with these strict track limits. But Pierre Gasly, Espan Ocon, of course, Alpine always seem to be sitting around the cusp of points in this series. This is Oscar Piastri, those had a bit of a nightmare start all the way down to P3 then. So one of the Red Bulls there making their way through and probably Carlos Sainz as well. As you can see, Enzo again trying to look for it as he head down in towards the hairpin. That was scary. Big front double lockup. Just had to be really, really careful and pray that we didn't under-rotate into Esteban off on there. But yeah, today is going to be an interesting one. Like I said, really did struggle for confidence after qualifying. Just could not quite get the car placed where I wanted it. As a lot of the brand the outside of Esteban Ocon, but a good start. Hopefully, it will give us a bit of a confidence boost there. As the AI, right, of course, we know just how good they are through these chicanes. Of course, you know they've they've got that ultimate commitment. Of obviously, with the traction, you know, with the track limits, things like that. I'm pretty certain they can't actually pick up track limit penalties inside F123. And I mean, we've seen incidents before where they've run wide, probably should have picked up a warning and haven't. I know it's why I have obviously seen the comments from some of you saying go back to regular. I'm going to leave it, of course, down to community choice. Um, but, yeah, it, it's kind of I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. Because, of course, a lot of you obviously complain about the track limits anyway. So, obviously, I've done this and now people are complaining the other way about the track limits. So, it's a bit of a tricky one. Uh, but I'll tell you what else is tricky and that's staying inside the DRS range of Ocon. I mean, said though, the strict corner cuts have helped me in my league racing. Obviously, did my first race in WOR a couple of nights ago. I'll be uploading that onto my sim racing channel over the next couple of days. We didn't get a single track limits warning that race, which did give me a couple of freebies uh, come the end of the afternoon by virtue of obviously other cars picking up some penalties. So I was very, very happy with that. Um, but yeah, so we're about to start lap four though, trying to get a run on Esteban Ocon. Doesn't really help me out too much, Mark, to be honest. Sergeant a long, long way behind, but good to know, I guess. Oh, yellow's out. Esteban Ocon appears to have exploded. Going to get in my way as well as we make our way through the next chicane, but back-to-back -back engine failures for Esteban Ocon. And in the last two Grand Prix, he's barely completed six laps. I can quite clearly see that Marky retired right in my face from this race, but we're up to 11th then, one place outside the points. Gasly, though, a little way up the road. See Albon under a lot of pressure from the second Aston Martin and Kevin Magnussen down in towards the Wall of Champions chicane. Don't cut the corner. Got to be careful. This is Verstappen, new fast slap of the day again. So quite clearly, our cars are really struggling here. I think Albon's lost one place and he might be about to lose another couple. There's George Russell, Pierre Gasly waiting in the wings. And this is why, obviously, we need to continue with these last development upgrades. Um, but, yeah, again, it is just a bit of a bogey track for the car. I don't think it's just me this weekend. Albon is also struggling already on just lap seven. Starting to struggle a bit with these tyres just dropping away from Pierre Gasly and George Russell a little bit. And unfortunately, now Magnussen's at the front of that group. Aston Martin, I've got a quick race car here. It really does give us a bit of trouble in that regard because now effectively we've got five incredibly competitive teams and Alpine that can just about hang on in there. So points are still not guaranteed week in, week out, especially when we have a bit of a nightmare like we have so far this weekend. But yeah, got to try and make sure we get to our pit window. Of course, don't really want to pit much earlier than lap 11. You just see then nick the grass as we head down to turn one and that's another half a second to a second gone amazing though still just how quickly the tires can fall off inside f123 just trying to keep the car between the white lines but yeah we've lost a good second or so to fittipaldi and unfortunately of course we're, we're kind of comparing fittipaldi's pace to the aston martin at the front of that train so it really is one of the fastest cars against one of the slowest cars inside f123 but i'm tempted to just try and come in for a little bit of an extra undercut I know we're going aggressive on the tyre strategy anyway, so we can afford to be slightly flexible, obviously, on this two-stop. As the pit lane entry is much earlier than I remember it being. Always forget that here in Montreal, but we do manage to get it slowed down still, nonetheless. 
as we head into pit lane. But yeah, are we going to be able to get a nice, clean, tidy stop, though? That's the all-important question. Let's see, here we go. Uh, clean and tidy. Yeah, pretty good there in the end. So we're going to be down into last place then of the GP. But yeah, we're hopefully now going to be able to undercut back up towards Gasly and Co. Let's make sure we keep it between the white lines. And Sergeant is going to be the first car on the old hit list. Oh, AI having a break super early there on their old tyres. The Sergeant, yeah, having quite a lonely race so far this afternoon. Oh man, give me some room. So we get down the inside at the hairpin. Up another place, then back into P20. Three seconds up to Lawson and Yuki. Oh, and then Lawson. Let's see what you got in that Williams car there. Fittipaldi we're actually having a bit of a battle with so far this afternoon, as Lawson often has had the better of his young Brazilian teammate. Apparently that was a great pass by Mark, even though it was quite a simple DRS overtake, and hopefully we're going to get another one on Yuki Tsunoda as we make our way back down in towards some one purple final sector. But yeah, we got the grip. We've got the confidence, which is not something I've been able to say so far this afternoon. And we are back up into 18th place then. Definitely feel like... Oh, Gasly, looking on the minimap, has now lost the DRS as well. So that's even better for us. That's not looking so great. Have forgot to swap out the gearbox this weekend. Uh, hopefully we're not going to lose any. Tear poor chair, one of the first AI into the pit lane then. So P17... Will now be ours, but yeah, we're setting a good, consistent lap times here. I'm trying to keep these mediums in a good working range. Oh, big switch on Joe Grand, knew that. Definitely have got a lot more grip at the moment, as we'll try and make sure he's very, very clear that he is losing the position. No other cars are into the pit, so I don't know what sort of strategy Teoport Chair is trying to go with this afternoon, but you can see the sky getting a little bit more overcast. Are we going to get an update? Oh, okay. Mark now oblivious to any rain, so if it is going to arrive today, it's still a long way out. And Stroll in the Haas has often been a perennial back marker so far this season. It's just not got the pace in that car. They're even against a young Teo. It's a big lockup, but we get around him. It's not really what I wanted to do to the front there. They are now definitely 50 pence pieces. Oh, they got thrown off there slightly. Lando Norris into the pit lane as we'll rub up against the Wall of Champions on the exit. Uh, but yeah, we've basically recovered back to where I would have been uh, had I not made this pit stop there. There is Enzo Fittipaldi, so I don't think we're at any risk of losing places because of this strategy. It's just whether we can make it work late on in the afternoon. Of course, trying to be a lot quicker than Pierre Gasly. Montreal is really one of those tracks where the two stop has always been you know, the potential to be strong inside the F1 games. But obviously now, with the new adjustments, it certainly is even more viable than ever before there. Just can we try and get a run around the outside of Nick De Vries? That McLaren is pretty damn racy down the straights. But we'll try and commit. Oh, second warning. Got no more of those. Um, but yeah, it's those ones that are annoying. You've gone side by side with an AR. You get the wheels on the white line. And the game says, nah. Yellow flags out on lap 17. I think it's a Ferrari. Can have a look. I think it was Carlos Sainz who might be out of the Grand Prix here. So a heartbreak for Ferrari. And well, he's been so consistent so far this year. He's already gone to the Shadow Realm. And yes, it is Carlos Sainz then. Oh, come on, Fittipaldi. Out of the hairpin. So now we are back then right next to the top 10. There's other cars peeling into the pit lane. Try and get a run on Enzo. This is going to try and give me a big old squeeze. We need to get right the way around him, though. Let's make our way down into the final chicane. Will we see Bottas pit? No, we will not. The Alfa Romeo stays at another lap, as that might be the best line I've had through the chicanes so far today. Gasly, we will be ahead of him as well, then. It's down the inside of Bottas at turn one. Oh, that was aggressive. Oh, no, Bottas! Bottas hadn't backed out of it. No! Valtteri, why? And now for Tabaldi. We'll get up inside the top ten, then. I thought, you know, he was probably going to bail out of it at turn one there. I've got no idea how he kept the momentum around the outside of me. But a little bit of contact, and we've lost a good three or four seconds from that. That means Gasly is now right over my gearbox again. Here comes Gasly. I don't really want to lose the place to him if I can avoid it. Uh, but we're going to. Right around the outside, he'll go there. <laughs> Deary me. Uh, might be able to get another DRS run on him as we head down in towards the head. Might actually be able to dive him down in... Oh, come on, Matt. Don't start getting ridiculous at this stage of the day. Gasly 
We'll get the run around the outside. Alban into the pit lane as well then. But I don't think we're going to get anywhere close to any of those other cars. Our battle today... Whoa, Pierre! Come on, man. You can't just keep swinging. Get the car slowed down into chicane. Yes, we will. Uh, but yeah, back up the inside then of Pierre Gasly is how close are we going to be to George Russell? We're not going to be a million miles away still. I'm racing him on pit exit. Now, Russell just about has made it round me. Um, so yeah, we definitely could have been a little bit further up had we not had that incident with Valtteri. Here goes Pierre again, though. Still not going to give up on it. Oh, okay, banging wheels. Three, yep, I'm not letting you have it, man. I'm going to make Pierre Gasly work for it because every lap we can keep him behind us for now gives us a big advantage okay, later on in the day. One. Oh, Pierre Gasly again getting a run on me, though. Sam round down, round the outside into the hairpin. Oh, I've locked the rears. Completely locked the rears. And got to get out of the way. And now Bottas will sneak by as well. We are just all over the place at the moment. Are these new brakes on the car still not working very well there? As Yeah, I haven't locked the rears like that in a long, long time inside F123. I know we had a couple of big saves last weekend, but never have I had one that completely upset the car there as Bottas into the pit lane then. So Lando Norris's pit just a few laps ago but is already all over the back of me here. It's not long before we're going to dive it into the box for our second stop. But yeah, if we even want to score points here today, we've got a lot of work to do in the second half. It's turned into a bit of a nightmare. I'd say it's turned into one. It's been that way pretty much since the start. Again, though, Lando Norris is another car I need to keep at bay. We're going to try and be cheeky with the DRS. Fernando, oh, come on. Don't go around on me again. We've just about kept it pointing the right direction. I don't think I've been cheeky with the DRS, though. I forgot how much earlier it is onto that range. So, effectively, I've just given Lando Norris the place here late on in the day. But 13 laps to go. We only a couple more before I need to peel back into the pit lane. Take that final set of softs to the checkered flag. But, yeah, I've not struggled with rear locking in a long, long time. And I can't really move the brake bias around. Because otherwise, we're going to struggle a lot worse with front locking, which I definitely still am as well there. So, might try and dive in at the end of this lap. Rain doesn't look like it is going to appear here in Montreal. No, I've lost fourth. Oh, that's a nightmare. Fourth gear round here is useful. Fourth gear round here is incredibly useful. You need it on a lot of corner exits through the chicanes. I've been rammed by Nick DeFries. Come on, man. Just play nice. I'm in a wounded car now. This is just a disaster. Oh, come on. Just rotate around to me again because obviously we tried to go through fourth gear. Obviously, it just double down shifted into third, so the engine brake there was horrendous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel in now. It's a very long way to try and take the final set of soft compound tyres, but I'm hoping we can fix the gearbox in the process. Make sure we get the car slowed down. Yes, we will. Oh, this, I mean, well, I've said we've had a few disasters in recent weeks, but this one has been on another level. We have just not had the pace in the car all weekend long there and honestly I reckon even if we'd nailed the lap we would have barely made it out of Q1 but I'd love just to get one solitary point from this Aston Martin have made a huge leap forward and that is really really compromising us as well Bottas and Joe though I think are going to have to pit again before the end of this race and I still have not got fourth oh I've got fourth again hurrah right hopefully we're not going to get any more issues with that before the end of this race but I can see Lando Norris there out at the end of sector one. So we've got to be making up well over a second a lap on these cars towards the end of this race and look after these tyres. not going to say it's impossible, but I don't fancy my chances. Okay, so rain is going to arrive, but it's going to be after the Grand Prix. I was kind of banking on that to really help me out today, but it's not going to happen. Oh, poor chair then, I'm assuming into the pit lane once again. So he's on a two-stop strategy this afternoon, as that was probably a bit too aggressive on the final corner entry. Uh, but yeah, Lando, we are definitely going a lot quicker than. Oh, Michelle Guanyu down the inside of Yuki Sonoda, and a lot of elbows there between the pair of them as they make their way through the hairpin. Less than 10 laps to go of this GP, and if they can hang on side by side, which they might do. Sonoda has actually got the DRS off of Valtteri Bottas in front there, so can we try and switch them both? On the exit of the final chicane. No, in a word. Actually, we'll get still get a run on Yuki. Off the corner. Still no DRS for us, though. Zhou Guan Yu. Going to try and go defensive. 
Oh, Yuki, I think he thought about trying to have a look back down the inside of the Alfa Romeo, but thought better of it. Little nick a wheel on the grass and really squeeze him out on the exit. Mark's still loving it, though. He, he likes a feisty move, does Mark. Oh, well, then, Joe Guan Yu. I feel like I've overtaken you a couple of times already this afternoon. Might not be the places I want to be making overtakes for, but at least we are getting overtakes in. Last couple of races have been, you know, a lot of defensive drives and that kind of thing, as we'll get even more DRS as Bottas now trying to apply some pressure to Lawson. 40 seconds behind Albon, though. Goes to show how much of a nightmare we've had, as that gearbox is really not enjoying itself. Oh, Bottas broke earlier than I was expecting. Down at the hairpin. Down the inside we'll go on the Alfa Romeo and a bit of an unorthodox move, but we'll take it and hopefully we'll be able to get Lawson on the exit as well then. Around the outside of the Williams, no DRS for him. And we will be up then P14 we go, but Lando Norris is still a good 10 seconds up the road. This is not going to be easy to close up by the end. Well, Lance Stroll, I don't know quite how he's got himself up to P13, but apparently that's where he's moved up to this afternoon as... They kind of left me half a car's width down the inside. As a Formula 1 driver, you're always going to try and take that. P13 now in this race is hopefully going to start getting a delta on Lando Norris soon, but five laps to go. It is a... I mean, we're still going two seconds a lap quicker than the AI at the moment, so Lando Norris is not out of the rounds of possibility that we could try and be at least close to the McLaren before the end of this race. It's down the inside of Fittipaldi. Just try and get the car slowed down. Oh, he's, he's jumped that chicane. That should be a penalty. I mean, it won't be, because it's the AI. Uh, but yeah, Lando Norris, nine seconds up the road then. Four laps to go. We need more than two seconds a lap, which I'm not holding my breath for. All right, come on then, Nick DeFries. Not really able to get a move done just yet as we make our way. Down in towards the final few corners of lap 11. And unfortunately, that means even less of an opportunity to close up on Lando. Trying not to snag the brakes into the air, but it's an aggressive move. We'll get it slowed down, though, just. Yeah, that, that's pretty useless information, Mark, at this point of the day. But nine seconds to Lando Norris and three laps to do it. I'm not optimistic late on here, but, I mean, it's basically all or nothing at the moment. So we've just got to go for it. Well, Canada can often be a weird track in the world of Formula 1, and I tell you what. It's sometimes been a place as well where drivers have left sort of shaking their head. Jensen Button is a fantastic example of that. I think it was 2012 where he finished a lap down to Lewis Hamilton on raw pace. Uh, and honestly, that's kind of how I felt today. Just have not been able to get the car working the way I would have wanted it all weekend long. Q1 disappointment. The fact that we're only seven seconds away from the points in the end um, is probably a bit of a miracle, especially when you consider, of course, we've got span around twice. Maybe even three times in this GP. Oscar Piastri, though, is once again a Formula 1 Grand Prix winner there and will end Red Bull's dominant streak at the start of the year. So Aston Martin bring one big upgrade overhaul. Oscar Piastri immediately out the gate there with his second Formula 1 career victory. So hats off to the young Australian. Uh, Red Bull, though, will get a double podium. As you can see how much we're struggling still with the car through the final couple of turns. But... Yeah, Albon, I think, has come through for sixth place there again, so showcasing just how much the car really struggled. Gasly and Norris are going to round out our top ten. But you know what? On the contrary to that, oh, through the final chicane, we've got no penalties today. So I'm quite happy with that there. You've got to try and take the positives. P11, though, is heartbreaking. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Magnificent drive and a great performance from the entire team to secure victory here in Canada. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process and that work is very much paying off. Aston Martin's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the biggest names in the sport. They're making their way out to the podium as we speak, and the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them.
let's see how the driver standings have changed. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Oscar Piastri gets my vote today. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. And pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then. The end of the Canadian Grand Prix and Oscar Piastri pole position. Race victory. Didn't quite get the fastest lap. Looks quite simple on paper, but just a tenth of a second at the line between him and Max Verstappen there. Sergio Perez, P3 with fastest lap, will only lose out two points to his teammate, beating out Charles, uh, Hamilton, Albon, Magnussen, Russell, Gasly, Norris. And yeah, we down in P11 there. So really, really disappointed uh, with that result. It does mean championship-wise, though, 11 points the gap now, cut down to at the top of the table, and sights with that DNF still in P3, but 47 back now from our top two. Oscar Piastri will leapfrog back into sixth place. They're ahead of Hamilton and our teammate. Alban uh, and yeah Lando Norris with a couple of extra points on the board there means constructors unfortunately yeah that battle with Aston Martin looks like it's going to continue to rage on throughout this season there as Red Bull now with an almost 100 point lead over Ferrari but yeah I know it's been a tough few races you know I do apologize for those of you obviously that you know aren't maybe such a fan I know some of you like watching me struggle uh, but I know some of you obviously want us to have some success as well but we will get back you know we will continue to try and push on next weekend is going to be the sprint weekend here from Austria so make sure you get yourself subscribed because I promise you do not want to miss that